Salut and well done for tuning in to this night before news video to help you with your listening exam tomorrow. You've already saved 25% of your marks for French, but listening and reading together is worth 50%. So you need to put a lot of effort into revising the keywords and the strategy for these tests. A lot of students struggle with the listening exam. However, you can do better by remembering a few key tips. The first one is, you're not going to be the only person in the room that's thinking, I don't understand any of this. The strategy for the exam is to listen for key words and make educated guesses based on what you've heard. You're not expected to understand every single part of the recording. However, if you remain calm and you listen for the words that you know, you should be able to work out the correct answers. You must not leave any questions blank. A lot of your paper will be multiple choice, so it's always worth having a go. Read carefully to see how many boxes you are actually required to tick. If a question is worth three marks, you need to give three answers. At the start of this exam, you will be given five minutes reading time. This is crucial for your exam strategy and I'll be explaining why over the next few slides. Here are the 2019 grade boundaries. They were quite harsh. So if we go by these, Hopefully your grade boundaries will be a little bit nicer, but at least we can go on the harshest possible option. So try to get at least 37 marks out of 50 to know that you've secured a grade 5. As mentioned before, the 5 minutes reading time is really important for this exam. Do not waste this time because you can actually prep some of the questions before you even hear them. The most important question to prep is question 13, right towards the back of your paper. This is a question that has a box of answers like this. If you read the question, you will discover that only a few of the words from the box could possibly make sense for each of the sentences. So in the five minutes reading time, if you start by putting the words in the box into categories, for example, we can see here that we've got beaucoup, which is the opposite of peu, and we've got ennuyeux, which is the opposite of intéressant. If you start categorizing the words like this, it will help you to figure out which ones could go with which sentence. If you then start to translate the sentences, you will have some idea of what the potential answers might be. So, for example, with this one, the lessons are interesting or boring would make sense. You can also look for grammar clues. So in C, we have AUX. When it's got an X on it, we know that it's probably going to be followed by a plural word. So in this sentence, she likes to participate in clubs or trips would make sense. Because as you can see, both of these words have an S on the end. So they are plural, which matches the X. By prepping this question, you've got a much better chance of getting good marks on it because it's one of the more difficult ones. So if I start by putting my words into categories, like interesting and boring, they're opposites. Beaucoup and peu, a lot or a little, opposites. Ordinateur. Équipement sportif, so computers or sports equipment, they're things that a school might have or might need. Près ou loin, near or far. Club, voyage, um, they're both things that you can attend and they're both plural. And then we've got dessin, art, which is kind of just left by itself. Sometimes you can't really group them equally and you'll end up with some leftover words. But at least by putting them into categories, it can help you to find the right answer. If you look at grammar, for example, anything with LES must be leading up to a plural word ending in S or X. So, for example, in this one, the lessons are interesting. It's got an S on the end, which matches LES and the S on the word lessons. It could also be boring because having an X on the end can also be plural. 
If you see something like this, so you've got D apostrophe, you know that the next word is going to start with a vowel or a silent H. So that can also give you a clue. And this sentence says there are not enough. It could be computers. It could be sports equipment. If you see AUX, as we mentioned before, you're looking for something that's plural. For the next one, we've got she spends, so it could be a little bit or lots of time. Remember, beaucoup is always followed by de, beaucoup de temps, lots of time. And for the last one, the only category that we haven't really used is the yellow one. And if we read the sentence, it says she lives blank from school. So she lives near to school or far from school. Now that I've done this, I have a much better chance of getting the right answer when I hear the recording because I've limited myself to 50-50 guesses. So now I just have to listen for a keyword in the recording and hopefully I will choose the right one. So let's try a different one. Remember you can pause the video and do this one for yourself and then listen to me go through it and see if you got it right or you can complete it along with me. So for this one straight away, I can see people. So it's sa mère, his or her mum, son frère, his or her brother, son père, his or her dad. So one of them is going to be about people. Then I've got places. So I've got cinema, restaurant. Um, I've got adjectives, strict, généreuse, jeune, strict or generous or young. And I've got time phrases, souvent, often, rarement, rarely. And left over, I've got some countries. So I've got la France and you can see l'Algérie was crossed out. So they've already used this one. Sometimes if I've got a word that matches a word that's already been used, I kind of assume that that word won't come up again. So when I'm looking at the sentences, the first one I've got in the family, they argue, they dispute. So I think it's going to be often or rarely. I think it will be a time phrase. The next one, his or her brother is the most. So surely it's something describing the brother. So young or generous or strict. But would you describe your brother as strict? Maybe, you know, we've got to see what's on the recording. Samir gets on best with. So it's got to be a person, hasn't it? Who does he get on the best with? And we might get a kind of clue depending on what they say about the brother. The dad is, uh, could be young, couldn't it? Could be generous, could be strict. And on a Sunday, the family goes, va, il va, elle va, to the, and we can see, I mean, it doesn't really help us here because we don't have lots of options of places, but we've got au. AU is going to be followed by a masculine place, um, but we only have like two masculine places. I guess it, you wouldn't put on Sunday the families go to France because then it would say en France, not au la France. But anyway, so it could be cinema, it could be restaurant. So once again, by splitting this up, I give myself a much better chance of finding the right answer. And I make productive use of my five minutes reading time. If you're quick at putting question 13 into categories, something else that you can consider doing during the five minutes is reading the title of each question and making a short list of words which you think might come up. So, for example, if the title was going to the cinema, I would be expecting to hear regarder un film de guerre, les billets. Now notice I haven't listed every single type of film like un film d'action because they're quite easy ones. If that comes up, I'm not going to have to like dig back in my memory to remember what an action film is. I've listed the weirder words for the topic. Problems in my town. So again, I'm looking for like what are the typical words that the examiners use that are very different to English words. You can pause and come up with your own list. Or you can just continue and listen with me. So I've gone for la circulation, traffic, les déchets, litter, les SDF, um, homelessness, homeless people. 
Again, the examiners are likely to pick this kind of word because it's unusual and they want to test to see if you've learned the more unusual words or if your French is very basic. A music event in Lorient. Sometimes you'll see a word and you'll think, I've never heard that before in my lessons. However, if it's got a capital letter, remember, it's probably the name of a place or the name of a person. So this one, look, a music event in Lorient. It's a place. So I'm thinking that I'm going to hear fête, fête, festival, celebration, fort, bouillon, loud, noisy. Les feux d'artifice, artificial fire. So we call that fireworks. School subjects, what are the weirdest ones? Le dessin, l'OPS, le devoir, something like this. My job in a zoo. So this is obviously from the jobs and future plans topic, but it's a little bit of a more unusual one to come up. Le travail, les animaux, la salaire. I imagine it's going to be something along those lines. While you're making this list of words by looking at the title, you can also read through the potential answers and that will give you an even greater insight into what you're about to hear. So in this one, you're going to have to pick between horror, comedy, animated and action. So you could start to write down the words that you're expecting. Again, I often don't bother writing down the ones where they're too obvious, like action or comédie, because I think, well, I'll know that one if I hear it. Make sure you revise numbers before the test, because the examiners really enjoy testing your knowledge of basic year seven things that you might have forgotten especially on foundation. They like to put time phrases. So here you might hear uh, 19-15, 19-15, or you might hear it described like half past, you might hear 30, 19-30. When you see the non-multiple choice questions, you could always try to predict a sensible answer. So for example, name one task that the zookeeper has to do. Without even listening to the tape, we could predict that it could be something like cleaning the animals, feeding the animals, uh, buying new animals. How do we know that he cares for the animals he works with? It could be that he puts in extra hours, he cleans them, he feeds them, he knows all the names of the animals. Now, it's quite unlikely that the same answer would come up twice. So if I already heard the recording say, oh, one of the tasks is feeding the animals, I imagine that it's going to be something different for the second question. But this is just before I've even heard the tape, what I'm predicting that I might hear, just so that I give my brain less work when I'm actually hearing the recording. One disadvantage of his job, um, <laughs> well, working in a zoo, it might not smell the best. Um, maybe it's really tiring. Maybe his salary's low. So even if something a bit strange comes up that's different to the kind of questions we've done in class, think of what it might say if the recording was in English. What would be a typical answer for this type of scenario? Always check how many answers you need to give. So for example, on this one, it clearly says that you need to put a cross in each one of the three correct boxes and you can see that the total number of marks for the question is three. There are three different people, so each person will have one answer. That will give you three total crosses. Don't make the mistake of putting three crosses for each person because that will give you a total of nine marks and this question is only worth three marks. So always read all of the information very carefully and don't just make assumptions. When it comes to listening to the recording, remember that sometimes they will deliberately mention all of the answers in order in one paragraph. So don't just write the first answer you hear. If straight away you hear um, cinema, that might not be the answer. They might be saying, oh, my dad likes the cinema, but I prefer going to the park. So make sure you listen fully to the section. As we've practiced in class, pay special attention to when you hear someone say pa, because that means they don't go or they don't like that place. So if you have a look at the script for this one, 
you can see that they mention canoeing, they mention sailing, they mention water skiing. However, if you have a look at little words, small but deadly words, phrases such as me, time phrases, you should be able to pick out the right answer. Just don't jump to the first one you hear. So in this one, we're looking for where does he like to go? So not just where does he go, which is the one he likes to do? So you can see that he's saying there is a lake where you can do some sailing. So he doesn't say he likes to, he says where you can, where you can do some sailing or canoeing, even water skiing. So he's just telling you what you can do at the lake. But then clearly on the next line, you see it's the fishing that interests me. So the correct answer for that one has to be fishing, because even though they mention all of the other ones, we can see that the one that interests him is pesh, fishing. That's his favourite one. So that's the kind of trick that they're going to pull. But if you're listening carefully and if you're prepared for it, you should be able to work out the right answer. There are lots of little words in French, which some students ignore while they're reading. This is very dangerous because they can actually change the whole meaning of the sentence. So you need to look out for them. That's why we call them the small but deadly words. Sometimes they are synonyms. You know, they mean the same as each other. For example, easy and simple. Or sometimes they are antonyms. They mean the opposite, easy and difficult. You need to make sure that you've revised the small but deadly words. You can do this by pausing this screen and looking up any words that you don't know. Or you can have a look on Vocab Slam because there's a whole set called Small But Deadly Words, which has all of the words which might possibly come up in the exams. And while we're on the subject of Vocab Slam, if you go onto it and you look at the exam zone and exam vocab, you can go through all of the keywords from the past papers or you can pick a set that's called examiner's favourites, which has keywords which we've seen coming up again and again on all of the past exams. I would recommend that you spend some time doing this tonight after watching this video and tomorrow morning right before your exam. So those are all the key messages for the listening. Do remember that you won't be the only person in the room that feels like it's confusing. It is confusing. It's a completely different language and you are trying to pick out the key words. This year it will be slower. It will be more like the first mock you did um, in November. So that will be to your advantage, but you've still got to concentrate all the way through the test, listen for the keywords and make educated guesses. Do not leave anything blank. It's not worth it. You might be able to get like one mark just by putting a guess. So you've got to answer everything, especially doing foundation. They're multiple choice, most of them. At the start of the exam, the five minutes reading time is really important. No one should be looking around the room. No one should have their head on the desk. No one should have the paper closed. You've got a job to do during that five minutes reading time. Your job is to go to question 13 and work out the possible answers and then to read the rest of the questions and write as many of the keywords as you can think of. This will help you out a lot when you're hearing the recording because you've already kind of acquainted yourself with the contents of the question. We're really going to aim for top marks here. So we want to try to get at least 37 out of 50 just to be really safe if we're going on the harshest grade boundaries that we've had. Well done for watching this video with my final tips before your listening exam tomorrow. What you can do tonight is keep revising your keywords. Remember, the more vocabulary you know, the easier the test is going to be. You can also go over the um, scripts in the Easter booklets. These are all the scripts of what has come up in previous listening exams. The same types of questions and the same words come up over and over again. So by reading that, that will help you out a lot. You can also have a look at the listening booklets that I've sent out to your emails. But please remember to get a lot of rest because your brain is going to be on top form tomorrow morning um, as you complete these exams. See you tomorrow 
Bonne chance Au revoir <musique>